In this Greek Orthodox monastery, deep in the Sinai Desert, is a very special painting of Jesus Christ, known as the Pantocrator. Many researchers are convinced that it was painted while looking at the shroud. It was painted in the sixth century. We see on the icon that the eyes have a very large uh, staring appearance. But if we rotate it to the shroud, we see that the eyes on the shroud have the appearance of being wide and staring and a little off center. Uh, we notice Dr. Dr. Wanger has perfected a polarized light technique for comparing shroud images with other images, like the Pantocrator. And as I rotate, the filter looking at these two images on the screen, uh, one image will fade in into the other. We do this for exacting uh, comparisons. On the icon, uh, we can notice a, what appears to be a tear trickling down the cheek at this point. But if we rotate the shroud, we we'll actually find that there's a little stain, possibly blood stain running down the same place. If we drop down to the tip of the nose on the icon and then shift to the shroud, we notice the configuration of the nose is quite exacting. Looking down at the lips on the icon, we see that there are apparently a chapped lips here. But if we look at the detail on the shroud, we notice that uh, all of those marks are visible on the shroud. Jesus was the most illustrated person in history, but the Bible never said what he looked like. How do we know? How do we know he had a beard? How do we know he had long hair? Where did artists get their imagery from? Art historian Jack Riley has made a study of the face of Jesus in painting. Is there a common source for this image we all know so well? Each artist has his own view of the man suffering, triumphant, the redeemer, the humble. Yet artists over the centuries have stayed within certain parameters that allow us to recognize the man as Jesus. What are the guidelines and where did they come from? Riley and many other researchers believe there was a prototype Jesus that set the standard centuries ago. The search for that prototype has taken researchers back to the first centuries following Jesus' death. How would an artist get from this image to this image, where we have the beard, no beard, the hair falling down, parted in the middle on both sides, not here. This, this Jesus looks like a Roman god. He's painted in a youthful manner, doesn't have the same characteristics. The question is, What's missing? In the 1930s, French researcher Paul Vignon noted numerous markings on the paintings that have been done of Jesus Christ for many years. Uh, these came to be known as the Vignon markings. Let's take a look at some of them. First of all, notice this line transversing across the forehead of Christ. And look at this, a geometric three-sided square on the bridge of the nose. Also, another triangle right here on the nose, an elongated nose that is indicative of numerous paintings of Christ uh, from the period. Scholars have identified the owl-like eyes, the elongated nose, and the rest of Vignon's markings on the shroud. Was the shroud the model in the first place? Here we have some reproductions of some 11th and 12th century paintings in which you'll notice these geometric markings. First of all, right here between the nose, you see that strange geometric U-shaped three-sided square. The owl-like eyes. The uh, long, elongated nose is a characteristic. Notice the two long strands of hair hanging down on the forehead. On all four of these images, all four, you see the wisps of hair. Not one strand, but you actually have two strands of hair. All of these markings, all of these congruent points, lead me to believe that something influenced these artists.
These similarities are not only found in paintings. This coin was struck in 695 AD. Uh, we see on the coin a rather crude image here, but as we rotate our filter and then go uh, back and forth, we notice there are some remarkable similarities. For instance, if we look on the coin, we notice these large clefts off the side of the face here, but if we go to the shroud, we see exactly the same cleft. On the coin, there's a bridge across uh, right here. We rotate the shroud, we notice the same bridge there. On the coin, there's a little outpouching here. We rotate the shroud, there's the same outpouching right there. As we look at the eyebrows, we see these match up. If we look at this blood stain on the shroud here, we see that in the uh, hair here, if we even drop down to the fold on the shroud across the neck, we see that the iconographer who was doing this uh, dye for the coin included this very exactingly. And there's no question who the dye cutter thought it was, because here it says, uh, Isa Christus Rex Regnatium around here, Jesus Christ, King of Kings. If the shroud is the burial cloth of Jesus, then it began its journey here, where Jesus died. In the modern city of Jerusalem, the past is still alive. Many of the customs still reflect the ancient world. Does the burial of the man on the shroud fit with ancient Jewish culture? American-born rabbi Micha Halpern has lived in Israel for many years. He has made a specialty of first century Jewish life. This is the Via Della Rosa. It's about one mile long. It's the traditional place from which Jesus walked to his crucifixion. And pilgrims come from all over the world and have been coming for centuries to traverse this very path. Anybody want something for dollars? Jerusalem at the time was a Jewish city, and as a result, Jesus would have been buried in the context of Jewish law. Shroud scholars believe that the burial of Jesus, though hasty, was performed in accordance with Jewish custom. The Jewish Bible relates that one should remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh, on Friday afternoon, people are running and hustling and bustling in order to finish their chores before the Sabbath enters. Um, so too was the case 2,000 years ago. Jesus was taken down from the cross on Friday in order to speedily inter him before the Sabbath day because nothing can be done on Sabbath. No work, only rest. Is there any record of the shroud in the earliest years right after the death of Jesus? 